mom or your sister? No, but over the years, there were hints. But I guess they basically brushed it off. The hints were everywhere, but they're my family. They try to not look at it. I guess when someone just knocked on my door, he's here at my door right now, and he wanted me to call 911 because he said he just murdered someone. Okay, and he's there right now? Yes, ma'am, and I'm scared. And he said he murdered someone? Yes. Okay, is there any way that maybe I can speak to him? Would you like to talk to 911 on the phone? Uh, Hello? So what's uh, going on, sir? So, as I said, I've murdered someone, actually. I'm fascinated by the more artistic ways of murder, the way they cut them open, just slice them to pieces. I mean, such care, such love. This note is titled Life Resignation Notice. Sorry for the bathroom mess, mother. Good luck recovering from the shock, you too. When he says good luck recovering from the shock, he's taking pleasure in knowing the pain that his mother and his sister are going to experience. This makes the suicide not about him, uh, but rather about the pain it's going to inflict on his family members until he decides it's a better idea and more hurtful to just kill them. And then on a whim, actually, I turned it over, wrote a plan to kill both my mother and my sister. We're looking at a murder plan. Kill mother with garrote. Afterwards, prepare to leave for good. Wait until nightfall. Go to Sis' apartment and kill her, anyone else in the way. Leave for the Greyhound bus ASAP. Victory. So he shows a level of organization and planning and obsession. So a plan to kill both my mother and my sister. That's always been a thing of mine. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit of a pervert. And we used to have a gray cat named um, Claire. Mm -hmm. and I strangled it, I drowned it, and then I cut it open and 
you know the rest and kind of get the rest. In the sort of postscript of this letter, he says, I killed that stupid gray cat because I was bored one day. Sorry. He's saying, oh, this is what I do when I'm bored. So imagine what I do when I'm not bored. They're my family. Family looks past that kind of stuff, or they try to not look at it. It's kind of funny how you never really know someone, not even your own son or brother. How long have you had this folks you been? It's around my preteens, actually. Do you ever seek uh, any kind of medical attention, psychological? Nope, I never really seeked help, actually. Mm -hmm. I just accepted it as a part of me. I wasn't really ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. It just was what it was. Shame, guilt, remorse deter us from doing terrible things because we don't want to feel guilty. We don't want to feel ashamed. Psychopaths generally will not experience these emotions. And so the shame that would generally come with doing something terrible or wanting to do something terrible just doesn't exist. Kevin Davis talks about how he feels disconnected from everyone. He's aware of it and it bothers him. Psychopaths would not be bothered that they're disconnected. In fact, they may not even notice that they're disconnected because they typically tend to be popular because they're charming. Kevin Davis is not charming. He's not interested in impressing anybody. What he shows is disinterest. He's absolutely not interested in neither criticism nor praise. Um, the police detectives don't know what to do with him. He is not that interested in what they have to say. He's detached. And detachment you see in psychopathy, but you also see it in some other kinds of manifestations. Um, so he shows a lot of signs of being schizoid. It's a particular kind of personality disorder um, where you have no interest in relationships. You will not have close friends. You have no interest in any activities. You're not curious about anything. Nothing really turns you on. One possibility is the mom noticed very early um, that he just wasn't fitting in. This was a child who was a loner, you know, didn't socialize, was not interested in friendships. His relationships really seemed to be limited to his mother and his sister, um, and so his aggression was thus targeted at them. He said, um, basically, I'm a grown man, and what I do, I just can't really stop me. She was, and no, she was distraught over it, of course. I mean, she, of course, of course. She had decided she was sick of this stuff. She was going to go send me to live with my sister again. We're looking at a text message from mom to the daughter. Um, I could tell you so much that I've told him exactly what you just said. I'm just tired, not so much physical, both. Living with someone with a serious mental illness or who's very disturbed, draining, and she's a single mom. She's absolutely exhausted. And so I kind of left off in a fury and just did it right then and there. Okay. You did what? Well, I tried to strangle her with a cord. Mm -hmm. Ripped cord from a video game console controller. That didn't work, huh? What was your thought of your thought of finger? She was sitting on the couch okay. watching TV. Okay. Psychopaths do have lower impulse control, um, and it didn't see seem like he really thought through this plan very well, evidenced by his initial attempt to kill her failing. He didn't really think through what was about to happen. That didn't work out too well. She started screaming. She right. grabbed the cord, so I raced back into her room, mm -hmm. opened a drawer at the very bottom to the right, I pulled out a hammer, I went back in the living room, and well, you kind of get the gist from there. And uh, she was out pretty quickly. Kind of tried to play dead at first. How many times did you hear with that? At least 20. 
but then she was still alive. I dragged her into the room, as you clearly saw. I just knew it was time to act now, now or never. Anyway, give me your fancy of killing a woman. This is a little peculiar. I'm on the camera. Okay. Um. <laughs> He's never actually talked to anybody about these things. Um, so there may be uh, a hesitation in, oh, actually, is it OK that I'm on camera? No, I don't actually care. I can't wait to talk about it. Maybe dressing up in a nice suit, sneaking into her house, disabling her boyfriend. You know, I'd I bring a pretty dress with me to dress her up in. I I was always into strangling, but I guess maybe something big and sharp would be more along my thing. And, um, then I'd go to town and it would be a night to remember. Mm -hmm. And then I'd kind of just burn everything and run for the hills. He has had this fantasy for a long time and has thought it through. There's a couple of things which are really interesting. And one is the need to be well-dressed. And so everyone in the scene is going to be well-dressed. He's going to be in a suit. For him, it's a means of control. Psychopaths tend to like to manipulate people and play games with people because it's a way of fulfilling some sort of enjoyment for them. You feel sorry you did this to your mom? In a way, yes, but I wouldn't take back what I did. It's strange, really. I did love her. In a way. Uh, uh, you being mean to me? To oh, me? no, no. She's been the best mother. Kevin Davis says a kind of love, and this again, speaks to a psychopath's ability to identify that their emotions are not the same as others. It just shows how unbelievably warped his experience of emotion is. My mother, she said my sister's going to come pick me up now, like in a few minutes. Okay. What's your sister's name? Uh, Desiree. Was it a, a fantasy of yours to kill her as well? It was. I had always loved my mother, I guess, in the wrong sort of way, but a kind of love, I guess. What about your sister? Was it a, a fantasy of yours to kill her as well? It was. Did you write down that on, on your note? Oh, I did, actually, but... I decided against it because, well, I had my fill of killing. I didn't seem a little much. Mm -hmm. A little too excessive, yeah. Is she okay? She is okay, yeah. Okay. We need to find your sister, just to make sure that she's okay. You said you didn't hurt her, right? I did not. Uh, we're trying to call her the phone. We can get her. The detectives, they're worried that he's lying. Um, however, he's shown absolutely no signs of deception whatsoever. He has not lied about anything else up until that point. Yeah. I'm trying to hang down. I thought it was so familiar. Desiree, it's Sergeant Garcia, Mr. McGee. Please call me at this number that I'm calling you on. I'm talking to the boss. I'm talking to the boss. Sorry. Put 
wherever she'd be at now. Probably sleeping since last I checked she works late. Do you remember what the note said? <sighs> Keep your head. Hurry. She might still be alive, although I highly doubt it in parentheses. Are you just messing with, with Desiree by writing that, that she might still be alive? In my sick sense of humor, okay. I was pretty well off my rocker by then. She may yet live, although I doubt it. Hurry, Desiree. Sincerely, your brother. He says sincerely, which is something that you wouldn't necessarily write to your own sibling. But then he writes your brother in sort of a ha 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 in your face, this is who did this to our mother. And those were the scenes where he felt most psychopathic, where he was taunting her, and he was taunting in a deeply cruel way. Psychopaths generally um, have a pretty high bar for experiencing fear. So their kind of resting heart rate and their resting physiological response is uh, much lower than the average person. To experience any sort of fear or kind of arousal or what we would call kind of an adrenaline rush, it needs to be amplified to such a degree that the average person would be absolutely terrified. Um, by the experience, but the psychopath needs that amount to feel any level of arousal whatsoever. So let's say the average person would get an adrenaline rush or feel afraid by watching a, a scary movie or going on a roller coaster. These kind of normal experiences would not really elicit a reaction from a psychopath, which is why they tend to do very extreme things in order to feel anything. You appear to be a nice guy. You appear to be a good guy. No, you know, you're not yelling and screaming at you're him. Very you're, you're very rational. You're very rational. You're feeling good. That's what I'm trying to figure out. That's all. Well, despite how I ended her life, I'm kind of more fascinated by the more artistic ways of murder, the meticulous manner, the way they cut them open, just slice them to pieces. I mean, such care, such love. It's completely counterintuitive to the emotion of love. But for him, the thought and care that he and potentially other murderers might put into these killings, that to him is the expression of love. It's clear from this video that he's done some research. Um, he, uh, you know, looks up to probably other murderers, people who have done things like this. Uh, and then there's a second note in, 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 in your mom's bedroom. What did that one say, you remember? Chase me. Was that addressed to the police or, or to who? I, I was just in a, I was in a very playful mood at the time. And then you came up to the, was it like the first house that you saw or? Yeah. Initially my plan was just to run, run, run as far as I can, but then I ended up crying my eyes out and like the, Thick woods, like, oh, uh, what did I do? I knew that my life wasn't going to go anywhere, not anymore. He may, in fact, have cried his eyes out. This is someone who potentially has never cried before. Um, that's an intense emotion. This is the first time he's really been able to fulfill this fantasy and experience any sort of intense emotion. And that may have been overwhelming for him, not in a negative or positive way, not because he regretted it or felt shame for it, but it was just a release. Psychopaths don't know what it's like to be alive because what makes us feel alive, it's emotions and connection. They don't feel much and they cannot connect. And so perhaps it was one of the first times that he had such a strong, exhilarating sort of sensation. Um, he felt alive and he wanted to stay there. I just went over there to their house to use their phone and then they wanted 
I was using their phone, so I thought I might as well tell them when they asked me questions. I mean, they had questions, I'm using their phone. And Hold on, he's going to talk to you. Hello? What do you, what's uh, going on, sir? You said that, that you killed her. What happened? Uh, well, I killed her. I guess I'll, it'll all come out in court. No, but I'm saying, I, what, did you shoot her? Did you stab her? Or what? I, I bludgeoned her with a hammer. Okay, so I'm going to get somebody over there to you, okay? Okay, bye. Do you consider you mentally disturbed? Do you consider yourself crazy? Do you, oh, or do you think you're okay? You just got some bad thoughts. I mean, I'm sane. I know exactly what I did. I know that it's wrong in the, tra in the traditional sense of wrong. I don't have standards or morals. Body's a body, and in the end, piece of meat. I guess it's harsh to say, but now I feel vaguely um, but, but. kind of like I'm done. Mm -hmm. If he was not apprehended, he would have geared up and done it again, potentially to his sister or somebody else. Um, but when he says, I'm done, I think he's referring to this very specific murder and not necessarily his inclination for murder. You still feel like, they, well, you're done with your mom. You still feel like you want to keep on killing? I came here to pay for my crime, so I guess I should continue with the truth. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, yes. Yes, I would kill again. Mm -hmm. It's all for me. It's gonna, I will say the music, whatever happens, happens. There's not a happy ending for me yet. Really? Just tell me, what do you think should happen to you? What do you think the punishment should be? Uh, whatever the judge, the people, jury deems fit, I can rot. I can suffer for years or I can be given the death penalty, whatever they think. Um, the medical examiner confirmed today that the victim's injuries were consistent with every part of Davis's story. There was about uh, 18 lacerations about the head, uh, scattered about the surface of the head.